Welcome to the first episode of Golf Cart Q and A. I take very frequently asked popular questions about golf carts, and if I think it's a question that I can answer that will help a lot of people, I answer it right right here. The question I'm answering today is, Sloan, should I buy a golf cart from a big box store like Lowe's? Typically, I'm gonna do more than one question an episode, but this question is a doozy. So I wanted to start this whole thing off with a bang and answer this super controversial question because I'm pretty opinionated about it and pretty passionate about it. So if you have questions, golf cart related questions, please put them in the comments below. If it's a question that's really popular and I think a lot of people will benefit from my answer, then it'll more than likely be in future episodes. Let's get to the question. So I have my laptop here and I'm gonna read this first question, this, this question. So the question was, Sloan, I've been flirting with the idea of buying a golf cart for the family. And I was in a big hardware store the other day and I saw a really cool looking golf cart that had a lot of cool features and it wasn't that expensive either. Should I buy one or will I regret it? Well, I have to set this answer up a little bit. I have known I've been wanting to make this episode for a month now and I knew I wanted to start it with this question. And this question actually kind of steered me into start making videos like this because I really, really feel like I need to give my opinion about this whole thing about golf carts being sold in big box stores. I'm not coming at you answering this question from a place where I'm a small dealer and I'm shaking my finger at these big stores selling golf carts saying it's not fair. It's not the case at all. I have had hundreds of phone calls all summer long from people that own these golf golf carts from these big box stores that they need parts they need them fixed they need them serviced you know everything under the under the sun that involves owning a golf cart they are helpless because they can't find anybody to fix them or work on them or service them i've also talked to a bunch of dealers that i'm friends with around the country that have had the exact same experience saying that they are getting calls like this too i've actually had a couple dealers even reach out to me saying i should become a dealer for these carts just because of the amount of calls they get and I could get them parts because that's how often they're getting called. So those two experiences, not to mention I've looked through the Facebook forums of the, the for these golf carts that are sold at these stores, which they are, they're Coleman golf carts. And I'm not talking crap about Coleman golf carts. I just want to make that clear too. I'm talking about the big box store idea versus small dealerships, but uh, there's Coleman golf cart groups in there. I looked through there too and a bunch of similar post questions that go right along the lines of the phone calls I've been getting. The same concerns, same issues and stuff like that. But I felt like, you know what? I, I want to know even more before I answer this. So me and the wife went to one of the stores that sell these carts. And uh, what they are is they are candy golf carts. So K-A-N-D-I, they make golf carts and other small vehicles. And what they do is they'll sell to businesses like Coleman, Coleman Power Sports. It's a division of Coleman. Uh, Coleman like the cooler brand. And they just buy their carts and then they s slap their sticker on it. So now say now it's a Coleman golf cart. And again, I want to make it clear here. I am not talking crap about these carts. I'm not talking about can crap about candy, Coleman, nothing like that. Again, I'm talking about the fact that it's being sold at a big store, big box store. We went to the store where they had three of these Coleman golf carts sitting outside and I started looking them up and down for 10 minutes or so inside and out all three of them looking at everything looking at them like i would our golf carts that we you know that we were prepping for a customer to pick up or or we were delivering and the wife got super bored with me doing that so she started shopping um in the store so i just sat out there for a while looking at everything and uh which i don't know why i don't know why she doesn't like golf carts as much as i do i love golf carts so i don't know why she doesn't she's not obsessed with them like i am so i don't know but also, it's not sponsored by White Claw, but I just wanted a little illiquid courage to uh, answer this controversial question here because I'm pretty fired up about it. So, And if you talk crap to me about drinking White Claw, then what else? And enjoy commenting, your, leaving your negative comment. I could care less. I was looking at the carts. After looking at them, I went into the store and tracked down some sales guys. And, you know, I had some thought out questions already that I wanted to ask that would help me today sitting right here at this desk answering these questions. So I first asked, okay, hey, I'm, in, I'm interested in these golf carts outside. And they were really cool, really receptive. 
They started going into a bunch of details about them. They, I mean, they knew, you know, surface level stuff about the cart and was just kind of telling me like, like, yeah, they can be driven on the road. And yeah, if they were, yeah. And they said, they know people that have them and they really enjoy them and stuff. And I said, that's pretty cool. And I said, well, do, but if I buy one, do I get this as is? And they were like, yeah, what do you mean? And I was like, well, there's a bunch of stuff. Like there's a couple issues with the carts out there. Like I was wondering like, does that stuff get fixed before I pick it up or what? And they're like, looked at me sideways. Like, okay, what do you mean? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, well, there's like wires hanging from the frame and stuff. And they just kind of, you know, scratch their head. They just kind of scratch their head and said like, no, you buy it as is. So, okay. And I said, well, I know these ones are pretty rough. I'm sitting outside for the last three months because we were at the same store three months prior and they're the same golf carts are still sitting there. So they were very rough looking because they've been sitting in the sun all summer long outside in the weather they're not pulled in at night so they're rained on and all that stuff i'm sure a bunch of people and kids are jumping on them every day so they're pretty rough i said okay regardless of these being rough from the experience they've had this summer can i get one that's like fresh off this truck off the semi when you guys get a new shipment in and they were said yeah i said so but even those those aren't getting checked from the sum after they're getting delivered like i just pick it up as is and they're like yeah we don't touch them and that is my first red flag big, big red flag because a lot of what us golf cart dealers do is prep the golf cart for you. Meaning if you bought a golf cart in the last whenever, or you want shopping for a golf cart, you went to some showroom and if the dealer's good, then you're seeing all the golf carts in the showroom or the golf cart you bought and you picked up or was delivered was all clean and perfect. And there was a bunch of, there was no gouges or scratches. The alignment was right. The, you know, there was no missing bolts and missing parts there. You know, they just looked, there was no really annoying squeaks. There was, everything was good. If you got the golf cart that was new and it was delivered and you start driving it and everything worked, all the led, all the lights worked, uh, you know, the headlights worked, everything worked as it should. And it looked perfect as it should. Well, the golf carts did not show up to the dealer that way. I can bet you money. Because manu- it's like a filter. The manufacturers are just putting these things together as fast as they can. And then it's filtering down to the dealer. Then the dealer looks at the stuff and says, okay, I need this wasn't really put together properly. This screw wasn't correct. This cushion's crooked. Or this was broken, broken during transportation. Um, this was scratched during transportation because all these carts all manufacturers are pr- practically just loaded in semis and stuff gets scratched and broken. There's, there's countless things that dealers run into with most manufacturers that they fix and prep if they're, if they're a good dealer and they fix the stuff. And then the worst case scenario, they have to get stuff. They have to replace stuff as soon as they get the golf cart in because something might have been broken when it was put together. And the person that put it together didn't know that they broke it or it was broken during transportation. But regardless, a lot of this, the success you have with the golf cart you buy, the dependability of it and all that really depends on how well the dealer prepped the cart. Now, this isn't the, for all manufacturers. I'm going to tell you right now, club car sh- those club cars carts show up to us and they are like very normally 99% of the time perfect. There's no scratches, no, there's no nothing broken. There's not a bunch of TLC or tweaking we have to make to them. At the most... We have to sometimes adjust the alignment a little bit because the steering wheel wouldn't be straight in the toe and super picky about wiring, especially. So we have to move a couple wires in every club car onward we get that's new. But that's not the case for all these new manufacturers like Coleman. These new manufacturers that's come out of the woodworks the last three, four or five years, they are not put together as assembled as well as club cars are. Now, again, I'm not sitting here dogging all these new manufacturers. I'm just saying this is how it is. The assembly, the assembly is not as as good. So the dealer is even more important. I have seen a lot of more comments lately about choosing your dealer wisely, which is, I know it's common sense stuff, but I've seen a lot more comments about choosing your dealer wisely on the internet and the forums and stuff like that than I ever have because these new manufacturers are requiring good dealers because or these new, because it's becoming more and more important because the quality of which these carts are assembled are not as, are, are not up to, you know, par with what customers are expecting. So for example, you know, certain golf carts need, they need six hours worth of work. Everything needs fixed on them. Stuff needs 
buffed, bolts need tightened, screws need re- this. I mean, there's just countless things. A light wasn't working. A connector wasn't plugged in, so the headlights weren't working. There's so many little things that you have to do on these you know, newer manufacturers' golf carts, and the dealer prep is very important on them. And this is why it's such a big, my first red flag, which I even have a bigger one. That's why it's so important to me. A lot of people think a golf cart is just a golf cart. I can't tell you how many times I've just heard, oh, I just want a golf cart. I don't care. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but that's not how it works. You don't just go into a car dealership and say, I just want a car. I don't care. The reason that it's such a big red flag to me is because these carts, regardless of them looking very faded and rough from sitting outside in the sun and probably being jumped on like a jungle gym, they had multiple things wrong with them. Two of the carts, the toe, the toe, the alignment was like two inches out. So the tires are going to be ruined within 50 miles putting on the golf cart. Then there was a bunch of wires that were zip tied to the brake mechanism and, and zip tied in other spots that were being pinched as soon as you stepped on the cart. So these wires are just going to be sh- are pinched and they're eventually, the coating is eventually going to be worn away and they're going to short out on the frame and cause issues. So many little things that weren't from sitting outside and people sitting on them that I was like, what the heck? Like bolts not being tight, tightened on the batteries under the seat. I noticed that. Just scratches and stuff like that, which I don't know if, how much of the scratches came from people sitting on them and getting on them, sitting outside. But, you know, based on my experience, I bet, yes, some of the stuff was already there before they were delivered. That's why it's such a red flag to me. Now, again, this is just takes common sense. If you know what the heck you're doing and you know and you value ten thousand dollars whatever these golf carts are sell for you know you're spending you know you you see these things and go okay never mind i'm not gonna these are rough i'm not gonna buy these but even if you buy a brand new new one that's fresh off the truck if you're not a golf cart connoisseur or salesman or builder there's gonna be some things you might not notice like wires being pinched and things and being zip tied to two p- terrible plot spots or wires just hanging on the ground like one of the carts had there's just stuff like that that I wouldn't, you know, I would tr- I would not drive or own unless a, a professional went through it and made sure it was all good for the customer. Yeah, that is why it's such a big red flag to me, first off, because that that is just a normal thing in this business. Again, I see it like a filter. The manufacturer, and it's not I'm not dogging any manufacturer, it's just how it is. The guy building the golf cart, the girl building the golf cart, they aren't trying to they aren't building it in with in mind that Oh, Bob and Sally from Van Wert, Ohio are going to buy this golf cart. So I want to make sure this is perfect for them. That's not really how it works. The, the guy, the girl building the golf cart is building it because the manager tells them that they have to build this many a day or whatever. And they're just building them as fast as they can. They're building them as well as they can. And then they're getting them out the door. Then that's it. That's just how it works. And then it's a known thing that the dealer is responsible for dealer prep and, you know, making sure they're perfect for the customer. That's just how it is for most of any manufacturing business. I'm sure most cars and trucks and campers and RVs and boats and all this stuff, high ticket items don't show up to the dealer. A one plus a plus perfect ready for the customer. I'm sure there's always little things on everything like that, that dealers have to go through to make sure they got to fix this. They got to buff that. They got to replace that. They got to, there's just a lot of little TLC and work and stuff they got to do. So that was the first red flag. I mean, right there, that alone is enough for me to say, oh, well, obviously I wouldn't buy a golf cart from one of these places if, but that's not, I don't think that's a, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I don't think that's a very well-known thing. A lot of people just think a golf cart's a golf cart. You think it has four wheels, it has a motor and it goes down the road, but it's not like, it's not like a car or anything. It's just a golf cart. Well, that's not true at all. There's a bunch of little things. Uh, Golf carts are fun. The last thing you want to do is have something that's supposed to be fun and then something doesn't work on it right. It's the golf, or the golf cart doesn't work at all because one little stupid wire wasn't in one stupid spot and it shorted out and it fried something on the cart or it's just not working now because it blew a fuse or something, you know, that's, that's just, that's why it's such a big red flag to me first, but then there's a bigger red flag. So after having the conversation and asked them some questions about that kind of stuff, I asked the salespeople about like service and warranty. They really quickly told me, well, the carts are lithium ion, so they're maintenance free. And I, this is when I had to like not jump in and you know, like answer them and tell them that they're wrong. I was trying not to give myself up. And they they told me that's maintenance. They're maintenance free. So which is not true at all. They a maintenance free lithium ion golf cart is not maintenance free. The battery is, but the golf cart's not. 
You still got to check alignment. You still got to change the rear axle oil. There's a bunch. You got to check nuts and bolts on the suspension after a while because sometimes even though they're Loctited, once you break a golf cart in, nuts and bolts can slowly loosen up and once it's broken in. So there's a bunch of little stuff you got to still do. So that was, you know, okay, one thing he said. But then he said, if I do need warranty work and service work on one of the golf carts, there's a place locally that'll fix it and replace everything. And that'll, that'll honor, honor the warranty and stuff like that too. I said, okay, well, that's pretty nice. At least even though I don't agree with buying the golf cart from the big box store, I can still get it fixed by a place locally. So then they brought another girl over because she bought a golf cart from the store and was talking to me and telling me how much she enjoyed, enjoyed the cart and how it's fun, how she has fun on it. And everybody was really nice. I'm going to put that out there too. Everybody was super nice. Uh, and again, like I said, if I'd be surprised if they were not paid commission because they were honestly trying to push me tar- pretty hard. Now I wouldn't say push me pretty hard, but they were, they were fun. They were, they were cool. And, uh, then I asked, I even asked her, did you, were you worried about service or warranty stuff since you guys don't work on them here? And she said, yeah, but she heard through the grapevine and through everybody at the store that the place locally down the road fixes them. And I said, okay. So then after that, we ended up ending our conversation and we left and I went full journalist mode. I told my wife to drive and I got my laptop and started calling all the dealerships around the area. And I called the first dealer. The first dealer I called was the de- dealer that the store told me that they fixed the golf carts and they honor the warranty. And I called them and said, Hey, I got a Coleman golf cart. And they instantly like pretty much like cut me off. And they were like, no, we don't know why people keep calling us. We don't fix them. We don't do the warranty work. We don't get, we don't have parts for them. No, we don't. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird that they told me that these guys did that, but maybe they have the wrong name. So then I started calling, I called the other three, four dealers around the area and they all said the exact same thing. No, 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 no. We don't work on them. We don't fix them. Nothing like that. So I was like, okay, what the heck? So either the people that are working so either the, so either the people that are working there were told wrong by someone up someone else or they're just again assuming golf carts are just golf carts and it's really simple and there's no brands there's no nothing it's just a golf cart and if you need to something fixed on it and you need the warranty and you have a warranty item that should be covered you just take it to any golf cart place and it gets fixed you know questions asked maybe that's what they're assuming i don't know um i don't think they just mischievously lied to me i don't think that but but i was told that and that was wrong so so then I, I called like 50 dealers within a four hour radius and every single one of them told me, no, 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 That they get calls about it all the time and they don't fix them. They don't replace stuff on them. They don't get parts for them. They don't do service. They don't honor the warranty, all that stuff. The same stuff we say to people when they call us. And I was like, what the heck? So, and keep in mind, I wasn't just saying Coleman golf cart. I was saying candy. I was saying all this stuff and they, they, they didn't work on them. Now, I'm sure that's not the case everywhere in the country. I guarantee you if there's spots in Florida, California, Texas, Georgia, all the southern states and the Carolinas where there's probably some candy dealers and stuff like that around. So you're not going to have this much of a problem finding somebody that could work on one. I'm sure that's not the case. But I did find I, I looked up actual candy dealers and the closest candy dealer was two hours away and they didn't I couldn't even get a hold of them. Then there was another one six hours away and they said they would work on the Coleman golf cart and get parts for it. Cause it's the same thing. Candy Coleman, same thing. I was like, okay, that's what really made me the spark the thing that sparked the fire to say, I'm going to make this video and talk about it. Cause I, I have to, cause this is, this is crazy. And the reason I'm so like passionate about this is just cause how bad it is for the end consumer, for how bad it is for you. If you're not a golf cart dealer, then you're an end consumer and how bad it is for you th- about this whole situation. This is the second red flag because I don't want someone buying a $10,000 or eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 golf cart that they are totally stuck in the sand. If they have any issue with it and they, and they can't get anything fixed, especially by the business they bought it from. Here's how this works. Let's say you're doing like me and my wife, we've been do, restoring our house all summer long. I need, you know, I'll, ha- I'll have a list of stuff I need. I need drywall. I need two by fours. I need plywood. I need screws. I need drywall screws. I need staples. I need electrical wire. I need wiring nuts. I need all this stuff. I I go to one store to get it all. That is the value that a big box retailer hardware store brings. They are big. They probably have stores all over the country. They can buy in bulk so I can get these nails cheap, theoretically cheap. 
way cheaper than I would if I was buying it from some super small mom and pop store that bought a box of nails a week compared to well, in these stores that are buying 50,000 boxes of nails a day. So that's, that's the value of it. And of course it's high traffic. So there's a lot of people going there for multiple things. And if I'm a manufacturer of one of these products, like I make a hammer, I want my hammer to be on the shelf in one of these stores where thousands of people are walking by my hammer a day because I'm going to end up selling a lot more because I make a product that's low effort. It's not like I'm selling something that has a, needs a, requires a ton of education and stuff like that. That is not the case. Now, yes, there's a small caveat. You have like appliances sold in some of these big hardware stores and stuff like that. Where we, even, we even bought our appliances from Lowe's. The guy was super knowledgeable, super smart. They did a great job. But guess what? They have a department for appliances and there's a warranty and it's honored by Lowe's and all that stuff. So if I bought this nice fridge we bought and it has issues, then I gets, it gets fixed at no cost to me. And that's what I buy it from them if that wasn't the case no i wouldn't so that's one little caveat they have departments which i'll get into because they don't have golf cart departments but that's one caveat that's how that works that's the value those types of businesses bring then you've got dealerships what dealerships do is they sell niched down products that they specialize in that they're professionals in that they know a lot about and that's all they do, or they do a couple other things that are kind of similar in the same space, but they specialize in that exact industry. Meaning if a boat, if I sell, if I'm a boat dealer, I know a lot about boats. I work on boats. I sell boats and how that works as a manufacturer, high ticket items, meaning expensive items, golf carts, cars, trucks, campers, RVs, boats, jet skis, anything that's expensive. Those require one, if I'm a manufacturer, I know, okay, my thing is expensive that I make. I need to make sure one that I have people that are very educated that can sell this for me. So I need someone that's like a, you know, like a dealer that they live in, they live, eat and breathe this industry. If I am a boat dealer, if I'm a boat manufacturer, I want a business that specializes in boats because then they're going to be able to one, if they like my product, if I make a good product, they're going to push my product. And two, they're educated so they can help people because people aren't just willy nilly like they're like you're going to Lowe's and buying a hammer. People aren't just willy nilly going to a boat dealership and buying a boat for $200,000. That's not how it works. People do a lot of research. They hear word of mouth. They, they have questions. They have concerns. They need, so the manufacturer needs somebody that's educated about the product and can help people, you know, make a good decision. That is the value that like a dealership has. Then most importantly, it's just as important as having a, as for this manufacturer to have a good sales force out there of a good dealership network that can sell their product well. The other part of it is, is that they're selling to somebody, the manufacturer selling to a business that can also fix their product. So like a dealership, we sell golf carts here, BA carts, we also fix golf carts. So. A, a manufacturers that are smart and know that their product needs that they know that their product will, will need serviced or maintained or need fixed worst case scenario. They need to sell it to somebody that can fix it because they know that their product is going to slowly tank and get a bad reputation or not, and not sell as many. And you know, it's all goes hand in hand together. If they're selling to some business that people are just that, and then they, and they can't get them fixed. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. So what am I saying? What the heck am I getting at? I'm saying that there's a reason it's so shocking to see a golf cart in a big box store like this, because there's a lot more to it than just seeing something and buying it like a golf cart after the sale service and experience is just as important before you bought the cart. I'm again, I'm not saying these specific golf carts are a mistake. And I'm not saying big box stores are bad. Don't get suckered in to buying a golf cart that's cheaper than most competition because you see it there and you think a golf cart is just a golf cart and not think about all the stuff I've just talked about. I'm, I'm saying I don't want you, if you haven't bought one and you want to buy a golf cart and you were thinking about buying one of these golf carts from one of these stores, I'm trying to keep you from doing it. And I'm answering no, I would not buy a golf cart from one of these stores because I don't want you to end up like all these people I've been hearing about that invest their money into a vehicle and then they can't get it fixed. They can't get parts. They can't get all this stuff done for it. Um, again, it might be different 
if you live in an area that can service them. But it doesn't really change my answer because if you live in some city that you can buy this Coleman golf cart cheap at this one big box store and then there's a dealer half an hour away that sells candies or whatever, go buy from that dealer then. Period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's how you should do it. Because if I was that dealer and you told me you just bought a golf cart half an hour away from one of these big stores, now you need it fixed. I'd be like, okay, well, maybe you should have bought it from me. I'd gladly, gladly work on it and support the warranty and everything and take care of you because you're a customer of mine now. Just like buying a car, a boat, a camper, buying a golf cart is an intimate experience. It's an expense. It's an expensive investment. So the purchase is serious. There's a lot of competition and options out there. So most shoppers want or need some education. Most golf carts need some TLC tweaks, corrections when it's transferring from the hands of the manufacturer to the dealer, to the customer. And then the, and the reseller is responsible for those corrections, the reseller being the dealer. And potentially the most important part is that golf carts get used, abused, broken, left in the weather, driven hard, and are full of a bunch of moving parts. So you most definitely will need the cart maintained and serviced down the road and more than likely need parts or both need parts and service when something breaks. And you need to buy from a reseller that can perform everything I just explained. If you don't care about 10 grand at all, and you say, I'll just drive this thing until it breaks and give it to my kid to drive it, then go at it, go ahead. But if you are seriously shopping for a golf cart that you really want to be able to use and depend on it, you've got your family, you want to be able to take them to school in it or go to the park or go to the pool and use it like a car, think about what you're buying because I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for this at all. They're just cash. They're, these big stores are trying to cash in on the golf cart industry. And if they had a golf cart department, like these stores have appliance departments, then I probably wouldn't make this video, but they don't. Yeah. That's that you can tell, you know, I'm pretty fired up about this and I know this might be controversial out there, but that's fine. I don't care. I stand, I, when I, when I see something like this happen for like an industry that I am fully invested in like golf carts and I see something that's like bad for the customer like this. And I just don't, you know, I got to speak out about it. I don't agree with it at all. I'm just saying, be smart. If you're a shopper, be smart and know what you're buying. Golf carts aren't just golf carts. There's a reason you don't see cars and trucks, boats and campers sold at big box stores because they require educated reseller. They, they require an educated, knowledgeable person to sell them and fix them and work on them because there's a lot more to buying a high ticket item. I'm not even mad that they're selling them about competition wise. I could care less. I'm again, I'm more concerned that all these hundreds of people that have called us, all the thousands of people that's called other dealers that I've talked to around the country that are saying these people are forking out this money for a golf cart and then they're stuck in the sand. They're stuck with literally if a golf cart won't work and they have a no, nobody to fix it. That sucks. I don't want that to happen at all. But yeah, end, end rant. If you're still watching, thank you for listening to me, to me rant. But I think when I've been working on this whole video and everything, the saying my dad's always told me that's always worked flawlessly. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. You know, if you're shocked about seeing a cheap, cool looking golf cart in one of these stores and go, oh wow, that's awesome. I I can afford that, I'm gonna buy that because that's cool. Even though I don't think, I don't know why this store sells this thing. So it's kind of weird that they sell it. And it's it almost seems too good to be true that it's that price and it's so cool looking. I'm gonna buy it anyways. Well, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So yeah, that's end rant. Uh, thanks for watching. If you got questions, please post them down in the comments below. They're not always going to be this fiery and passionate and long. I'm going to try to keep these videos to 10 minutes long max. So uh, I know this one's long, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, hit, please hit subscribe if you want to see more answers to questions and about golf carts. And uh, yeah, have yourself a great day or night whenever the heck you're watching this.